Hi, uh, in this actuarial path lesson, we're going to show how to integrate the normal distribution density function and get a value equal to 1. If the random variable x follows a normal distribution with mean, mu, and variance sigma square, then we can write its probability density function as 1 over the square root of 2 pi times sigma multiplied by e to the negative 1 half x minus mu divided by sigma quantity square. And the support of this random variable is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So what we want to do now is show that this integral, I'm going to call it q, the quantity q, which is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the normal distribution density, which is right here, integrates to 1. OK, so let me erase this equals 1 So since that's what I want to show. To do this, I'm going to let the variable u to be equal to the quantity inside the parentheses here. So that is x minus mu divided by sigma. So with that substitution, I would have the differential du being equal to dx divided by sigma, which implies that dx is equal to sigma times du. All right. So in this integral, I can substitute dx by sigma times du and x minus mu divided by sigma by u. Also, when x goes to negative infinity, using that expression there, you can see that u also goes to negative infinity. Likewise, when x goes to infinity, u, which is x minus mu divided by sigma, goes to positive infinity. So the limits of integration would still be from negative infinity to infinity. And then I'd have 1 over root 2 pi sigma times e to the negative 1 half. So instead of x minus mu divided by sigma, I would use this substitution. So I have u square dx. I can substitute by sigma du. And here you see sigma cancels out with sigma. All right. It turns out it's easier to calculate the square of the quantity q rather than just this integral q. So that's what we're going to do. So the square of that is the square of negative infinity to positive infinity of 1 over root 2 pi e to the negative 1 half u square du quantity square. But squaring a quantity is the same as multiplying it by itself. So I can get rid of this square sign here and then write this expression again, multiply it by itself, negative infinity to infinity, 1 over root 2 pi, e to the negative 1 half, u square du. If you change the variable of integration here from u, let's say, to v, this integral would still be the same. So I can replace u by v. So let me just do that. So raise u. All right, so that's v, v. With that, now you can combine these two integrals into one double integral. So negative infinity to infinity, negative infinity to infinity, 1 over root 2 pi, 1 over root 2 pi. When you multiply them, you have 1 over 2 pi. In fact, since they don't depend on either u or v, you can write it out here. So you have 1 over 2 pi times e to the negative 1 half. Now u square, v square, you can add them together. u square plus v square, du dv. So we have a double integral. One way to solve this integral is by using polar coordinate transformation, which is a bivariate transformation. In calculus, it's called uh, change of variables. If you haven't looked at polar coordinates before, uh, you could probably find it in almost any calculus textbook. Polar coordinates. So the region of integration, in my case, and in this integral, is from negative infinity to infinity for the variable u and from negative infinity to infinity for the variable, variable v, which is the entire um, Cartesian plane. That area of integration can also be represented by using two variables, r and theta, where r is the radius of a circle with center at the origin. So I'm going to draw a circle here. Okay. And 
and theta is the angle right here. That's theta. That's the angle, and that's the radius r. So this entire Cartesian plane can be covered by changing theta from angle 0 to angle 2 pi, which is the entire circle. So if theta ranges from 0 to 2 pi, and if r ranges from 0 to infinity, you can cover the entire Cartesian plane. So r ranges from 0 to infinity. Based on the picture that we have here, I can write u as cosine theta times r. And v is equal to r times sine theta. So this integral, q squared, can now be written as 1 over 2 pi times the integral. Now, theta ranges from 0 to 2 pi, so 0 to 2 pi. And r ranges from 0 to infinity, so that's 0 to infinity of e to the negative 1 half. But what is u? u is r cosine theta. So u squared is r squared cosine squared of theta. And v is r sine theta. So v squared is r squared sine squared of theta. Now du dv uh, is replaced by the, the absolute value of the Jacobian of the transformation times dr d theta. But what is the um, determinant of the Jacobian. The determinant of the Jacobian is the determinant of the partial of u with respect to theta, the partial of u with respect to r, the partial of v with respect to theta, the partial of v by r. Okay. What is the partial of u with respect to theta? r cosine theta the derivative of r cosine theta with respect to theta is equal to negative r sine theta. The partial of u with respect to r, which is the partial of r cos theta, with respect to r is just cosine of theta. The partial of v with respect to theta, so r sine theta, the derivative of r sine theta with respect to theta is r times cosine of theta. And the derivative of v, which is r sine theta, with respect to r, is simply sine of theta. And that Jacobian uh, is equal to negative r sine theta times sine of theta minus r cosine of theta times cosine of theta. That's going to be in absolute values. So that's equal to negative r sine squared theta minus r cosine squared of theta. So I can take negative r, that's an absolute value, I can take negative r, which is the absolute value of negative r, and, and I'll be left with sine squared theta plus cosine squared of theta. But sine squared theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1, but the absolute value of negative r is positive r. So I can write this integral as q squared, 1 over 2 pi, 0 to 2 pi, 0 to infinity, e to the minus 1 half. Now again, you can see you can take r squared as common to these two expressions. So when you, do, when you take r squared as common, you will be left with cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta. Again, cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta is equal to 1. Okay, times the absolute value of the Jacobian, which is r dr d theta. And that equals 1 over 2 pi times the integral 0 to 2 pi times the integral 0 to infinity of e to the negative 1 half r squared okay, times r dr d theta. Okay, now let's take this inside integral, which is with respect to r. To do that, I'm going to use a substitution again. I'm going to let, let me use w is equal to r squared, which implies the differential dw equals 2r dr. Okay, so that implies again r dr, something that I have here, is equal to dw divided by 2. So this integral again becomes 1 over 2 pi times the integral 0 to 2 pi of this inner integral, uh, and if um, when r goes to 0, 
okay? W also goes to zero, so that's gonna be zero. And when R goes to infinity, W also goes to infinity. So that's also to infinity of E to the negative one half. But R squared is what? R squared is W. R dr is dW by half. dW times one half, so dW divided by two. And let me have that in parentheses, times d theta. Okay, so that's one over two pi, the integral zero to two pi of, we can do this integral very easily now. I have one half here, I can take it outside of the integral, so one half times the integral of e to the negative one half, w dw is equal to uh, twice minus two e to the negative one half w, and lim the limits of integration are from zero to infinity, d theta. Therefore, we have one over two pi times the integral zero to two pi of, here you can see one half cancels out with two, therefore you would have negative e to the negative one half w limits zero to infinity. And you can see when w goes to infinity, this expression goes to zero. So what I have here, e to the negative one half w from zero to infinity uh, will become when w goes to infinity, this expression goes to zero, so that's zero. And when w goes to zero, that expression goes to one, minus one. Zero minus one is negative one, so this expression is equal to negative one. So this integral would be one over two pi times the integral zero to two pi times minus of negative one d theta. Minus of negative one is just simply one. So we have one over two pi integral zero to two pi d theta and that is a uniform, uh, integrating a uniform variable. So that's going to be one over two pi of uh, theta from zero to two pi. That equals one over two pi times two pi minus zero, and that is equal to one. So what we have is q squared, the quantity q squared, is equal to one, which implies that the quantity q, which is the integral negative infinity to positive infinity, of the normal distribution density, one over root two pi, sigma, e to the negative one half, okay, x minus mu over sigma, quantity square, dx is equal to one. So we have shown that the normal distribution density function integrates to one.